Hi, this is Go Code. In this video, we will see how to solve problems in which we are given some range A to B and we need to count numbers in the range having certain property. Let's take example problem in which we are given A is equals to 565 and B is equals to 10 to power 18 and we need to count numbers whose sum of digits equal to 81 in the range of A to B. If we try to solve this problem using brute force, what we will generally do, we iterate from A to B and check if numbers sum of digit equals to 81 and increment our counter. But in reality, this loop is not feasible because we can run any loop only up to 10 to power 7 in one second. So let's see how we can solve this type of problem in feasible time complexity. First of all, before going on, let's understand how we can calculate count of number representation with exactly k digits having sum of digits equals to s. We can simply get the count by using recursion and recursive equation will be this. And base case of this recursive function is if k equal equal 0 then we will check if we have sum equal to 0 it means we got the number having sum of digits equal to s so we will return 1 otherwise we will return 0. If you doesn't familiar with recursion and how to find time complexity of recursive functions then please first watch our playlist on recursion before going ahead. I have given a playlist link in description. By the way, let me give you an idea how this recursive function comes. Basically, what FKS denotes the count of number representation exactly k digits having sum of digit equals to s. If we know what is the count of number having exactly k minus 1 digit and having sum equals to s minus 0, s minus 1, s minus 2 till s minus 9. Basically, if we know the answer of these functions, then we can get the answer of fks. Why we need to calculate these functions to get the answer of fks? Because at kth position, we can put digits from 0 to 9. And if at kth position, let's say we put digit 2, then we need to calculate numbers having exactly k minus 1 digits with sum of digit equal to s minus 2. I hope you got the idea but I strongly recommend if you are not comfortable with recursion then please go first watch our playlist on recursion and then come back. I have given link of the playlist in description box. Our code of fks will be something like this. If you already know what is recursion and how to find time complexity of recursion then you can see that time complexity of this recursive function will be O 10 to power k which is also not feasible for larger k. But there are various states of this recursive function which we are calculating again and again. Like if we see the recursive tree for f23. I have not drawn the complete tree, sorry for this, but I hope you got the idea how tree would look like. Now if you see this recursion tree for f23, then we can see that this f02 we are calculating twice. I strongly recommend you to draw, the, draw this recursion tree for larger values to see that we have various states which we are which are repeating. So basically to eliminate the repeated computation we will store the answer of f02 in some container first time and if we encounter this state in recursive function again we will use the stored value instead of calculating again for f02. 
So let's do the changes in our recursive function to incorporate this memoization logic. We will initialize some container. For this, let's initialize 2D array. We can initialize the signs of this 2D array according to our problem. Let's say we uh, let's say we randomly uh, choose the thousand thousand. And initialize it with minus one and incorporate this DP array to store the value for FKS. Now before calculating FKS, we will first check if we have the if we already compute the value for FKS. If we already computed the value of FKS, then we will return the value from here itself instead of calculating it again. This incorporation of memoization logic in our recursive function will reduce the time complexity of this function fks to ok into s. By the way, what we just do is dynamic programming. If you are not familiar with dynamic programming, then, then congratulations, you just learned what is dynamic programming. Now we know how to calculate count of number representation with exactly k digits having some s. Let's come to our original problem which was count number whose sum of digit equals to s in the range of a to b. Now let's define mx which denotes count of numbers less than x basically from 0 to x minus 1 that have the given property. In our case the property is numbers having sum of digits equals to some s then mb plus 1 minus ma will be the solution to our problem of finding count of numbers having certain property from a to b so if we got to know how to find mx then problem solved so let's see how we can compute mx for simplicity let's take x is equals to 689 and we will see how to find count of numbers less than 689 whose sum of digits equal to 12. Let's first convert this number into array. Now since we have to count numbers less than 689 having property, first we should understand in what cases the number y is less than number x. Number y is less than number x. Firstly. If the number y is less than length of x then obviously the y is less than x and if they are of equal length and there is a digit yi which is smaller than xi and for all digits j smaller than i yj equals to xj equation hold true that is they are equal from left to right until a digit i where yi is smaller than xi. When this happen, then all digits at yj where j greater than i can be in the range 0 to 9. Now let's find out the answer for 689 which is mx. Now let's define our variable answer and assign it to 0. Now you will see the major role of fk property which we learned before to find the count of number less than 689 and having sum is equal to 12. Before going ahead, pause the video and think how we can find count of number is smaller than 689 whose sum of digit equals to 12 and whose first digit equals to 0. We can find this by simply calculating f to 12. Now similarly, we will count numbers is smaller than 689 whose sum of digit equals to 12 and whose first digit equals to 1. We can find out the count of numbers smaller than 689 whose sum of digit equals to 12 and whose first digit equals to 1 by calculating f to 12 minus 1 because we have fixed 1 to the first position of the number. So we need to calculate f to 11. Similarly, we will count numbers smaller than 689 whose sum of digits equals to 12 and whose first digit is smaller than 
6 which is array 0 now we will update our answer which will become f212 plus f211 plus f210 plus f29 plus f28 plus f27 if you observe we included every number which is smaller than 600 and having this property by doing summation of these now for next digit which is 8 we will update the property now property will become now since we included every number whose sound digit equals to 12 and smaller than 600 now we need to check the check the numbers which are which is greater than or equal to 600 and smaller than 689 so for this we will go to the next iteration and we will update the property now property will become numbers sum of digit equals to 6 now for this iteration we will count the numbers whose sum of digit equals to 6 and whose first digit equals to 0 till 7 why because now our digit is 8 and we will update our answer now again we will update our property for the next iteration and now our property will become numbers sum of digits should be equal to 6 minus 8 why 8 because second digit is 8 which is minus 2 now since sum of digit of a number can't be in negative which is minus 2 so we will stop here and our answer will be the previous answer which we have calculated our code to find mx will look something like this explanation of this code i am leaving up to you and i and i hope now you can understand this chunk of code better i have given links of the problems in the description box which can be solved using this technique which we call digit dp and their corresponding solutions so that you can understand better by seeing the solutions if you learn something new subscribe our channel to never miss our upcoming videos thanks for watching and we will meet in our next video